Sweet. And uh, we are live, guys. Um, thank you for joining us here today. We are here with uh, G Man and Kyle. Um, also, my co host, uh, Brandon Law, is here. And um, we're here to have a discussion on, or a debate, actually, on uh, morality. So, um, I guess what we what we'll do is is uh, each will make a kind of an opening statement, um, and then uh, each of the uh, the other person each of them will have about five minutes until about uh, eleven o'clock, and then I guess we'll, we can do like a free form little discussion uh, for about fifteen minutes, and then we'll take questions from the chat. I do got some questions, not and uh, don't worry, Jim, they're not trolling questions. Um, some of these are actually kind of serious questions, so. And uh, we and we'll just go from there. Is, does that sound good? Yeah, I just want to say yep. something. If somebody start asking me questions about safes and about divorce and all that stuff. Nope, no I'll just leave. I don't even want to hear that. No, nah, we no, there's no question about safes or divorces or anything about that. It's actually about on morality, so it's staying to the topic. All right. So, uh, got to put my volume up a little bit more. But um, who wants to go first? Do you mean you want to go first? Uh, if if I knew specifically what we was debating, I would have no problem with that. But um, just, just morality in general. Yeah, so I sent you <laughs> sent that to you in an email. So there's nothing specific about it, just morality in general. Because mm -hmm. that's not really a debate; that's a discussion. That's fine. We'll, we can discuss it. Yeah. yeah that's no problem. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. All right. I have to get some water, though. Just give me a second. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you, you, you kind of went after the Hebrew Israelites today, so. I saw that. I, I, I kind of figured he'd be a little hoarse, honestly, coming in today. The one atheist. That was a... <laughs> so, um... There was an atheist there? From what I thought I saw. Caught a little bit of it. Pretty good. There we go. All righty. All right. Let's begin. Um, should we do any time limits, or since this is just going to be a discussion, to be a little free formed? No, just like, yeah, you can just go right. however long. Sounds good to me. So we're not going on air. Oh, we're already on air. Sorry, the, um, I'm streaming this through <laughs> OBS. My bad. I should have let you know about that. <laughs> yeah, the the it's gonna say off air, but we are we're live through OBS. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess a, a good place to start may um, just to uh, what are your what are your thoughts on morality in general, G man? Yeah, in order to make moral judgments about something, you have to have a basis for it. If you don't have a basis for your morality, then you're not in a position to be able to judge anyone else's morality. That um, that uh, I'm, op I, I'm actually against uh, the idea of subjective morality. I believe at the end of the day, everyone needs uh, uh, some type of absolute moral value in order to make sense out of anything uh, that has to do with morality. For example, I believe and most people on planet Earth, if not all, believes that it is absolutely wrong to steal, that it is absolutely wrong to kill, that it's absolutely wrong, when I say kill, I mean murder unlawfully, that it's absolutely wrong to rape in every situation, you know? And if a person has a moral basis, they're able to refer to that to that basis, uh, those, those principles, those code of ethics, if you will. They'll be able to say that, okay, I believe that it's wrong to rape uh, because it causes harm to another human being. I believe it's wrong to rape because it causes this, that, and the other. Or whatnot. You know what I mean? With me, uh, the Bible is my um, is, is, is the basis for my morality. I have surrendered my will to the God of the Bible, and I accept his morality as being better than mine, and I accept his morality as being the final word. So there's really nothing else I can say about that. I think that subjective morality causes too many problems because then anybody can do whatever. And I believe that everybody has to have a, a, um, 
a basis. If you don't have a basis, then you have no business talking about somebody else's own morality. Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to read what kind of I wrote in, ahead of tonight. Um, and basically what I did was I broke down, um, I broke this down into four categories. What you will hear, uh, hear from me, what you won't hear from me, what you'll hear from G-Man, and what you won't hear from G-Man. Just based on the um, debates that I've seen him do on this particular topic already. And some of the things in um, his live videos that he says. Um, and here's what you won't hear from me. You won't hear any type of philosophical rhetoric trying to trick, confuse, or otherwise dodge any question that is thrown my way. I am not in any way, shape, or form a um, philosophical-based thinking person. I don't use things like presup or, um, you know, call out those kind of fallacies like that. I just don't think that way. I think in a very common sense, very straightforward way, and um, that's how I'm going to do tonight. Um, personal attacks. Unlike our last encounter, you won't hear um, me personally attacking G-Man. This is about morality, and this will stick to that particular topic. Um, convincing. I also won't be trying to get uh, G-Man to understand that um, the irony about his beliefs in, in morality. I go into this knowing that following this discussion, um, despite whatever is said here and whatever points are made, he will leave um, the same as he came in and more than likely leave to his channel and declare an overwhelming victory in this debate. We've seen it happen several times, and I go into this knowing that. But here's what you will hear from me. You will hear the basis from which my morality uh, stems, and why to say that morality comes from God is beyond laughable. Reasons why the Bible is perhaps the worst place to look for a certain set of moral principles, an example of which is the Bible's Large body of work spanning 66 books, 1,000 or thousands of pages, hundreds of thousands of words, and not one of which condemns rape or slavery. Uh, examples of how uh, examples of how G-Man, according to his own book, um, should be considered immoral based on biblical passages that talk about judgment, condemnation, false witness, lying, making a mockery of his religion, gossip. Um, covetousness, pride, complaining, working on the Sabbath, speaking evil of uh, fellow believers, rage, wrath, divisiveness, rivalry, slander, hypocrisy, whisperings, boastings, and so on. And here's what you'll hear from G-Man, that he believes it in objective morality, that there is such a thing as absolute right or wrong, that unless you have a certain set of standards, you are immoral, that these standards must have a basis in order for others to judge whether or not you have morals. And that all of the, this criteria must appeal to an ultimate and final authority. In his case, that authority is, is God, which has been uh, revealed to him through Scripture. The word faith will be used a lot, which, tra which, is a, which translates to, I can't back it up or there's no evidence. Here's what you won't hear from G-Man. You won't hear any evidence, proof, or anything that otherwise supports anything he says outside of the Bible that determines that unless you are revealed to by God or you have a basis for your morality, you have none. Um, or that he's wrong. Ultimately, like I said, this debate will end like any other one with a claim of victory, and it will be as if this never even happened. So to sum it up, the two things, uh, there are two things true about G-Man's view on morality. Take away the Bible and his morality falls apart. If God were taken out of the equation, by G-Man standard, he would be unable to stop himself from all the horrible atrocities in which he would commit. God is the only thing from keeping um, us humans from harming other people. This is not... Uh, this is... Uh, hold on one second, I'm just going through something. Um, my basis for morality is simple. My basis for morality is that I believe that doing the... Least amount of or least amount of harm and the most good is good. An intelligent person does not need the promise of heaven in order to see the merit in good deeds. You do not need religion to have morals. If you can't determine right from wrong, then you lack empathy, not religion. That's it. All right. Um Again, y'all wanted to kind of do this kind of free flowing, so um, yeah, I guess you guys go ahead and start. 
<laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be a discussion, not a debate. So a lot yeah. of those predictions are not going to come true, especially the one with victory since uh, this ain't a debate. Well, going into it, it originally was. We just decided on air just a few minutes ago that it was a discussion. All right. So what do you want to talk about? Well, actually, you you called me out on your Mark by God channel the other day when we were I was in the live chat. You said, let's have a discussion. So here I am. So it would seem okay. like you would have something that you want to talk to me about. Okay. So I'll put myself on a burner first. Do okay. you believe I'm a moral per do you believe I'm I'm a moral person or a immoral person? I don't think that you're necessarily either. I think you have moral uh, characteristics about you. Um, I think that you also have immoral characteristics about you. I don't judge you based on being a moral or immoral person. Everybody is in that same category. Everybody does things that are evil and bad, and people do things that are good. It's not for me to say if you're moral or immoral. I just want to make sure I, I, I understood you well there. You are admitting that human beings do both evil things and good things? Absolutely. Okay. You're not that far away from Christianity. Then. If the Bible says that we have all sinned that has fallen short of the glory of God. You're not that far. Sure, it does. But that doesn't make me anywhere near religion. It just happens to be that it's a constant that runs through everyone. Everyone can relate to that. I don't think there's anybody that would say that you're either all good or all evil. Be surprised how I many people I told to that claims that human beings are basically good. And I don't believe that. I believe that we're basically evil. Well, now that's a different thing. I do think that at their core, most people are good people. I don't think that um, f at the, for the majority, now there are some who are evil, but f as a whole, I think people generally try to do good. Are they capable of doing evil? Yes. Do they do evil? Yes, absolutely. But for the most part, I think that they try to be good, decent people. And how do they go about judging whether or not they've done good or evil? They go based on their personal experiences, like their um, their need to do unto others as they want done unto them. Their uh, desire to be, um, you know, do, like I said, do the most good and the least amount of harm to uh, continue. That's the biggest thing. It's an evolutionary process. You want to survive. So obviously if you had factions of people that just went around killing everybody all the time, there wouldn't be a human race left. Okay, so I noticed that you mentioned uh, about doing unto others as you would want done to you. You know that's taught in the Bible, right? It is. It's also taught in countless other religions, and, and it predates the Bible. It goes back to uh, the time of Hammurabi's Code. It, it goes back further than the Bible. Yes, it is in the Bible. But that's a thing, though. You have to wonder why something like that spans several different religions and not just one you know it's not that the bible has monopoly on that phrase it runs the gambit in several religions and why is that because it's a overwhelming um worldwide shared principle that it's just uh do unto others as you would have them do unto you it's innate it's inert okay <clears throat> i'm sorry man i'm giggling because i'm listening to this and this is my first time talking to an atheist that actually agrees with me on things. You know what I mean? So I would agree with you. I think that Jeremiah 31, 31 actually goes into how God writes his law on men's heart so that they know what is right and what is wrong. So I mean, I'm in agreement with you there from a Christian point of view. That they well, all I think that what God's will is and they don't want to do it. That's why they said. I think we agree that we all feel that. Now, where we differ is where it comes from. You feel that yours comes from um, the Bible or God, and I don't. I think it's a – okay, let me ask you this, G-Man. How do you account for people who are atheists and who do have morals and who live by those morals every day? What, what, what is their basis, or where is that coming from? Well, I can't speak for all atheists, but I can talk about the atheists I've debated. Uh, so far, the atheists I've debated are all depending on some type of subjective moral system, and I believe it's a flawed system because – uh, their subjective moral system allows certain things to happen in the world. You know, like, for example, if somebody tells me that they believe that their morality is based on their own personal moral values and not an absolute or whatever, number one, that's a contradiction in terms of the number two, uh, let's say they think that there's nothing wrong, I'm sorry, that they think that 
it's okay to defend your, I'm, I'm sorry, that they think it's okay to, to troll someone, then it's okay for me to do it to them. You understand? If they think it's okay for you to, 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 to do something harmful to me, then it's okay for me to do it to you. And Christianity is different. We're told to specifically to love, to love people and to love our enemies. And we're told to, um, to, to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. And it's an absolute, it's something that is practiced during, throughout the ages. We're not told uh, eye for an eye, two for a two for anything like that. You know what I mean? We're told to, to, to be a specific way. This is the way what we're supposed to strive for. So there's a consistency there. When somebody has this subjective moral uh, values, you know, it's just based on their own personal opinions. And your opinion might be uh, 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 that you think it's okay to do this, that, and the other. I might think it's okay for me to blow your head off. Who's right and who's wrong at that point? You can't make well, that decision because everything is subjective. Sure. I, I, I think that um, that when you're talking about, like, I, me personally, I believe in subjective morality. I think that um, it, also, because everybody lives by a, a different, you know, standard. And some things that we in this country feel is um, immoral happens every day in other countries, like in the Middle East. They live by a separate um, code of morality. Um, we have laws to help that we, you know, we think help guide in the right direction. But there are some things that uh, you mentioned the, the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth thing. Where is that from? That's from the Bible in the Old Testament. Okay, so uh, the things like when it does, the Bible doesn't specifically say anything against slavery or rape. How would you know that rape is immoral? Um, the Bible does say things specifically against slavery, and it gets quite specific about what should happen if somebody's raped in the Bible. Uh, I what don't know where that claim from, but but there there are claims that are that are in there. Okay, you, what should happen? Uh, for example, uh, if you, okay, let's compare the transatlantic slave trade with what happened in the Bible. Well, let's and, start with rape first. Let's start with rape first. What should happen yeah. if, if, um, well, if somebody's okay. raped, uh, then one or two things is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, this is a different culture. This is not the United States of America. It's not a democracy. This is a theocracy. This is in a different time, totally different system. Okay. Virginity was something that was cherished. Uh, uh, during this particular time, and if a woman was not a virgin, she would not be desirable. And mm -hmm. back then, the woman depended on the man to care for them. And if they were not virgins, you know, they wouldn't get married. No one won't be, able be, won't be able to care for them. So if a man raped a woman, he he had to marry her and care for her the rest of the rest of um her life. Or or it was option B. You 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 okay? Because even before that happens, you have to pay a certain amount to the father, and the father would have to make the determination whether or not um, uh, the man could marry him uh, or um, that person was stoned to death. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Now, is that moral? Big laws on, on rape. And as far as slavery goes, um, for example, man stealing, you couldn't do that in the Mosaic law. You couldn't rape um, a slave's wife in the Mosaic law. Slavery mm -hmm. was looked at a lot different than it is than it was during the transatlantic slave trade. It's not the same thing at all. Okay, well, let's go back before we get into the slavery. Let's go back to the the rape thing. Is what you described, where the attacker has the option of marrying the person that he raped, is that moral? Sorry, say that again. Is that moral? Oh, absolutely, because an absolute moral lawgiver gave it to, um gave it to the Israelites, and there's no one above him uh, uh, to be Speaking able to say law, whether or not morality, he did something right or wrong. The only kind of person that could eight, judge minds, whether or not that was right or wrong. He, is somebody that was that was that, that's his peer his or someone greater than him? Because as human beings are not his peer, Don't then we consent. certainly can't say anything Hi, about Kyle. what he's proposing to us. Not to mention, he also demonstrates in Scripture that what he says is true and it is right and it is beneficial over a long period of time. Does it does it bother you any at all, like on a human level, though, that um, saying that it is moral for the person that raped you to be able to marry you. I mean, that can't sit well altogether with you. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that seems at its basis to be just a horrible thing. Well, if I was looking at it strictly from an American citizen perspective and, and not from no other perspective, I would be in agreement with you. I'll be able to, you must be crazy. You know what I mean? But if you look at it from their culture, from where they are in the Middle East at this particular time, and how things were done back then, virginity was something that was sacred. 
A man did not want a hooker or someone that slept with the town. Today, we kind of like that kind of a person, right? But back then, they wanted somebody that was pure, wholesome, and, vo- and virtuous. Somebody that nobody else touched. You know what I mean? And and that person was the most desired person. If that person was found not to be a virgin, she would not be very desirable to anyone else. Mm-hmm. And she probably wouldn't be married, and there will be no Sounds one to care for her. So mm-hmm. it's very different. And it's not whether or not the woman who got raped has to marry a rapist. It's the rapist who has to now take care of his responsibility, and he can't divorce her. Okay, you said earlier that you you believed in objective morality, meaning um, it's right or wrong outside of um, our opinion, right? So, if it's wrong now, if it's morally wrong now to do something like that, why would it be okay then? And at what point is it does it change? At what point does it become no longer okay to rape somebody and then have the choice to marry them? When you say that is wrong now, what is wrong now? Well, you wouldn't say now that it's okay for um, a rapist to have the option to marry the person they raped, would you? (laughs) I have some weird opinions that you don't know about, but I kind of wish a lot of these laws was here today. I do. I really do. You get to strict your laws than what you see today, because when a man rapes a woman today, let's just look at it strictly from the woman's perspective, okay? When a man Mm -hmm. rapes a woman today, He's probably not going to jail because of all of the semantics you can play about the definition of rape and whether or not it was rape or not. Get about mm-hmm. five years in prison and his name gets put in the database. Back mm-hmm. then, he was either stoned to death or you had to take care of your responsibility. Mm-hmm. I wish the laws were more, it was just as extreme today than it, as they were back then, as I understand uh, the way scripture is. What about the woman, though? You're not taking into account like what she thinks or what her opinion should be what she thinks, what her opinion is. We live in a different culture. Again, virginity is not something that's sacred anymore. Uh, uh, and, 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 and Today, men will sleep with anything. And it doesn't matter how many men this woman's been with. You know what I mean? She'll, we'll, 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 we'll marry whatever's walking down the street these days without actually making any standards. You know what I mean? She can have to clap the chlamydia, AIDS, and everything else in the book, and we'll still want to be with her. Because, you know, we, we have all our confidence in condoms and whatnot. I believe that 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 if we um, that if we men uh, 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 desire a, a, a virtuous woman, a woman who has not been touched the same way they were back then, um, our society would be very similar to the way they did things back then. But you can't compare the United States today with ancient Israel. That was a theocracy, totally different set of laws. We have a welfare program, a social security program. We have uh, uh, what do you call it, child support, and all those other stuff and whatnot. It didn't have that back then. I'm like not trying to care for back then. If, if if God doesn't set up the system for for the woman to, I'm sorry, for for the man to marry her and to care for her, how do you, how is that woman taken care of back then? There's no my, there's no government there to pay for everything. My question my my question for that is though, um, the the man has the option to marry the person that he attacks. What why shouldn't it be up to the woman? Because I think we would both agree back then she would have had a choice in the matter. It was either the attacker chose to marry her or they would have to pay or the guy would have to pay her father, you know, whatever the, um, the fee was. Why isn't it in any way, shape or form up to anything that she wants? Because she's the one that got attacked and raped. Well, you so got to remember, it, this is the daughter. The daughter can go to the father and say, I don't want to marry him. If she desires, there's no law stopping him from doing that. And you also got to remember, there's also the death penalty for it too, in other in other situations. So it's rather. But it wasn't. Up- Let me ask you something. Would you want the death penalty be the death penalty to be administered to someone who raped uh, a woman today? Me personally, I think yeah. I think I would be okay with that. Yeah, I think I'd be okay. I with would that. absolutely. I would absolutely vote for that like that. I don't want somebody to be taken sure. out if they were found guilty sure. of raping someone. But we're talking about we're talking about morality, and I'm trying to gauge. Basically, what my reason for asking that is that you say that there was a moral basis for that back then. If that was an option today, would you say that there is a moral, there would be a moral justification for that now? Is it that your morals are only morals as long as God says they're morals? And if he changes his mind, then you're willing to do, you know, X if God's, you know, commands it, even if it would, by today's standards, be considered immoral. I don't think it's relevant today. I think that God that God looked at the corridor of time and looked at today, the system that we have today, 
and all the different ways that women can be provided for today. And he looked down the corridor of time and realized that law is not needed for today. The system that we have today, I wouldn't say that is better, but it's appropriate for the for the society that we're living in today. There's no need for the man to have to marry her. He should be thrown in jail and have all of his rights taken away from him and a plethora of other things possibly possibly get lethal injection for doing what he did or spend the rest of his life in jail for doing something like that. But um, there's no need for that today. It's, it's just, that's a completely, totally different society. Our society today, we, we we all depend on the government. So, you know. Okay, last question about that. Last question about that particular um, aspect, then we'll move on. If um, it was a thing today, if we still had that law today, that that would be possible would that you in your opinion would that be a moral um thing basically was that a moral thing back then let's let me ask you that back then back then when everybody it was everybody um, accepted it back then everybody accepted it and god was the one that initiated it well not everybody accepted it. you i'm asking i'm just asking you personally do you think that was a moral thing to have uh happen when somebody's raped considering the circumstances yes Okay, now we can go to slavery. Um, you were you were starting to tell me a minute ago what the differences between the two. There's a lot of differences in the slave laws. There 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 are laws for the for the Hebrew slaves, and and then there's the, the the laws in general about how you would treat your slaves if they came from another nation. Slavery was looked at a lot differently than it is today. Okay, uh, uh, some people don't even call uh, uh, when 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 the Hebrews enslaved other uh, Hebrews slavery. They called it indentured servitude. But it was also a form of slavery. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it, whether you call it indentured servitude or slavery, it's still slavery at the end of the day, in the broad sense of the word. They're serving someone. It was used as a way to punish people who didn't pay their debts. It was a way for a person that they could not provide for their family. They can willfully become somebody's slave, which is actually practiced today in the form of uh, 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 living jobs and things like that and whatnot, where you serve and you work for somebody, they give you a living quarters and they pay you. Okay, and Whenever a, a Israelite took a slave from another nation, they were still under the Mosaic laws. And their laws were very specific about what you could and what you couldn't do. Like, for example, you could not rape your prisoners. You couldn't beat your prisoners for no apparent reason whatsoever. You couldn't do all of the atrocities that happened during the transatlantic slave trade. So, you know, some people come to the conclusion that, that they could because they misunderstand certain passages in the scripture, like when they say that there's a loophole in the scripture where uh, they, they say that, that, that the slave loved their master, that, um, that, 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 that they could put all in his ear and keep them forever. But that is dependent upon the, the, the slave wanting to stay. Mm -hmm. It's not upon, not upon the, the, the master saying this. The slave has to want to stay. Maybe he can't provide for his family. Maybe, maybe he believes this is the best living condition for him. Maybe he believes whatever. You know what I mean? There's a story in the Bible um, where uh, uh, a Jacob um, was looking for his wife. I believe it was Jacob. Jacob was looking for his wife. And um, he, 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 had to, he had to work for seven years in, um, before he could get um, 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 Rebecca and Leah to be his wife. You know, I mean, seven, no, seven years. And then it was another seven years. It was actually 14 years altogether before he got them. And he went into that willfully because he loved these women so much that he was willing to work in order to get them. Again, this is a different society. This is a different culture. You know what I mean? And, and they just understood it differently. If this existed today, it does to a certain degree when we talk about indentured servitude, but some of the other uh, characteristics don't exist today. Like going into other nations, and getting people and making them slaves. He's not on that level anyway, unless you want to talk about economic slavery. No, we can get into that. That's fine. Uh, um, but the, let me let me let me tackle this first. There, you you mentioned two groups of um, people that could be considered slaves: those with the indentured servitude, and then those who couldn't provide for their family. Wasn't there a third reason that people become slaves, and that is the um, the capturing and the the war type slavery? Those who were you know, taken over in battles. Yeah, it was in huh? servitude and who you got in the prisoners of wars. It was yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So th those are the two. Now, the ones who were taken prisoners of wars, they right. obviously didn't owe any money. They obviously maybe could have provided for their family. They were taken by force and put into slavery. They didn't have a choice. So how was that 
moral? Well, and that was that's one of the harsh realities of our world. If in, in, in warfare, when you beat another nation, that nation has the right to do it with what it wants with its peoples and everything and whatnot. Just that's just the rules of war. I don't see anything immoral with capturing them and 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 and, and causing them to serve you. However, I got an issue about how they're treated mm-hmm. when you're causing them to serve you. It's kind of like uh, and, and I'm gonna use this as a similarity. I did this with Matt Dillahunty when I tried to explain this to him, okay. It's kind of like when you when you break a law in the United States and they throw your butt in prison. You know what I mean? People think that's not slavery. Oh, not only is it slavery, it's, 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 it's legalized slavery here in the United States of America. Because when they bring you in there, you go to bed when they tell you to go to bed, you know, mm-hmm. wake up when they tell you to wake up, they feed you what they want to feed you, and you come and go when they tell you to do it. You have no autonomy there. in prison. And, and, and when these people are captured, it's the same thing. So... I've 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 been there. I so I I can I can attest to that personally, but I would not call it a type of slavery today because the people who are in prison are breaking a law that is set. So that's a type of punishment. It's not the same as capturing a, another city because they got ransacked and then taking those people essentially hostage and forcing them to work for them. Those are two completely separate things they're not even anywhere close the same Mm. let me ask you a question if a moral lawgiver or if the lawgiver told you that it was legal for you to do these things would it be would it be considered immoral i don't know what you mean by uh, lawgiver okay in this case god is the one that made the law saying that they could do this would that be considered immoral i think so i think so yes because i don't i don't believe in god so i i don't appeal to Okay, um, whether or not he exists or not is not relevant. You can use him as a character if you want. Uh, sure. He's a moral lawgiver, okay, and he says that you can um, that that you can go into these nations and if and you can take the they take who you want as your prisoners, okay. Uh, is that considered moral or not? Me personally, I think that's highly immoral. Okay, but you're basing that on your subjective moral values. I'm basing yes. it on a final lawgiver who's not under a law. And 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 it's the creator of all. You know, we're looking at it from a scriptural standpoint. So since okay. since, since since there's nothing lawless about what's mm-hmm. going on there, then it can't be deemed immoral or be deemed wrong. Okay. We'll take a step back for a second and pretend. Let, let's go with your example and and let's say you and I are on the outside looking in, right? We're going to look at an example of yours and mine. Mine says that whether you know outside of God, I'm making the um, the um, decision that taking people because you beat them in war to work for you is immoral. And yours is, well, my God says that you can do that. So it is moral. Now, from the outside looking in, which two of those scenarios are optimal for people as a whole? I'm not sure I understand your question. Between the two scenarios, right? Which of the two do you think would be optimal for everyone involved as far as, you know, their health, their, um, the, their, their psyche, how they, their overall, their overall well being? which of the two scenarios is better for the people who are getting captured? So, so you're saying on, 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 on the one hand, God is saying, I want to make sure I fully understand this, that, that God is saying that you can take these people and, 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 and keep them as slaves. And then the other scenario is, is you shouldn't do that because that's immoral. Let's pretend like saying that it's immoral um, would would say stop them from getting taken by um, their captors. So now, which is be- what I'm ultimately asking you is which is better for those people who are getting captured? Um, God saying that this is a moral action to be taken hostage, or the one that says, "Well, because I wouldn't want to get taken hostage, I don't, know what the geek room is. I don't think we should take them hostage." Kind of scenario number two. I'm sorry. So scenario number two with God is saying that that you need to take these hostages because once they come into Israel, you know what I mean? They're going to be treated a certain way. Number one, they won't have to work seven days a week. They're going to be given the Sabbath. Their women won't be raped. You know what I mean? They're, 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 all these horrible things won't be happening according to the Mosaic law. I got a problem with the first scenario though, and I'm going to tell you why, and then you can elaborate on it. Okay. okay. Let's say hypothetically speaking that I agree with you. Wanna not, and, okay. Let's say I'm, I'm not a Christian. Okay. And I agree with you because I actually hear what you're saying when you're saying that, 
that you go to war with these people and you don't keep people for yourself and whatnot, right? I hear what you're saying with that, okay? Um, my issue with this, my issue is this, what do you do with the people? Well, you've already beat them in war. You just leave them, let them. I mean, this is a this is a, like a we're we're focusing on the taking of the people. But if I had to answer your question, just because I said that I'm going to answer each one of your questions, you leave the people. You've already you know killed their men or whatever. You, you if you have to make a decision based on what you do after you you beat these people, you leave them because they're mostly going to be women and children. You know, back then, so you just leave them. Why did you go to war to begin with? You didn't just go to war just to beat them and then that's it, you just leave them alone. We don't even do that today. You know what I mean? There, there, there has to be something that you do with the people. Do you re-educate them? Do you, and, and that's the problem with that scenario. There, there's no what you do after you win the war. This war, I don't know. you put down their idols, you destroy you know, the, the fabrics of what they're doing and whatnot, cause them to repent, and then you can take the women for yourself or the whoever for yourself. You know what I mean? Sure. They're bound to the Mosaic law and that's important. You're still bound to the Mosaic law, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and 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 these slaves have to be treated a certain way, or these POWs, prisoners of war, must be treated a certain way. Because even today, when we go to war with nations, we don't just leave them to themselves and do nothing. We'll create a base there, maybe put a new president or a new prime minister there. We'll, we'll do a bunch of different things. But we're not just going to go to war and do nothing and leave them like that, right? But we don't bring them here and make them work for us. You know what I mean? We we better their country over there, which would have been a good option for um, for them. Like to answer your question, that would have been a good option. Set up a, you know, a, a new form of government and and help them out. But we're ultimately talk, like, I don't know to answer the the best answer I can give you is I don't know. I don't know what you do once you, um, you know, sack a city. The, the question is on the morality of taking the people who are left hostage against their will because i believe we both could agree that in that scenario these people would not have voluntarily uh left with um the people who came in and and sacked the you know their their town or whatever so should they be forced to leave with that victor especially if it's ordained by god i mean being taken into captivity in in any sense should always i think be a bad thing well, that, and this is why you got to look at it from their society perspective, because Israel didn't always win their wars. They lost a couple of, they, 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 they lost to the Babylon and they had to serve the Babylonians. You know what I mean? And, 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 and they, they lost a couple of other times, I think in the book of Judges, and they had to serve under their oppressors before God yeah. liberated them. You understand what I'm saying? So, so it was understood back then that if you, and this is why I keep saying you got to look at it from that perspective and not from the United States from America perspective, from that particular perspective, that society was a certain way. So, you know what I, I mean? Look at it, was that that won the war, you was going to be serving somebody. I understand that. I understand that was the reality of it back then. What I'm asking you right now, we beat them in a war what twice now, I think, and mm -hmm. um, and they're serving us in the in the points in in in, in the uh, in the totality of oil. Any country we've ever beaten, we either have we either has a, have a base there or we're doing something with them that's going to benefit our country. So to some degree or another, they're serving us. Is it the same, though, as being taken into slavery? For me, yeah, I think it's the same thing. If you look at it from a broad perspective, from, from a narrow perspective, no, it's not the same thing. The, um, the people that were taken into um, captivity, there were two versions of slaves, right? There was the... Um, slips in my mind you had the um the is like the i guess it was wasn't it an israelite version you, you had two separate laws for or two separate sets of rules for two different types of slaves one being the the, the same of your own kind and then the other for the gentile right sorry say that again weren't there two different sets of rules for two different sets of slaves you had the ones who were um like of the same um nationality as the the slave master itself and then you had a set of rules for like the gentile slave no it's the same thing that we said earlier it's it's, it's, it's the rules for the hebrew slaves and the rules for the mm -hmm. that were pow's prisoners of war so okay wasn't in the, the, the ones that were saying gentiles but it's the same thing as a pow sure uh but the ones for the the pow's this, isn't there a law that tells them that they can um beat that slave within an inch of his life as long as he doesn't die the next day 
Uh, yeah, now I've had a discussion with Matt Delahunty about that, that he misunderstood. You see, uh, when people hear that, they they think it gives the, the, the slave owner permission to just beat them and beat them and beat them for, for no apparent reason and whatnot, because they, 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 they got this thing set up in their head from the transatlantic slave trade. OK, mm -hmm. uh, this is the reality of slavery, uh, especially back then, is that you are that person's money. OK, if, mm -hmm. if 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 somebody owed you a certain amount of money and you was their slave to work off that debt and that person broke a mosaic law or something like that or, or something along those lines, then you could do that because some of the some of the penalties in a mosaic law are rather severe. You could be killed for doing certain things in the Old Testament. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the Mosaic law also protects the slave. Uh, one of the things that's mentioned in the Mosaic law is that they have to love each other. You know what I mean? And, and, and I believe that's from the Leviticus, if I'm not mistaken. But if they don't love each other, you know what I mean? They would be guilty of breaking the Mosaic law. So you, can, you couldn't just come out of nowhere and just start beating your slave simply because you own them. That's the mentality that comes out of the transatlantic slave trade, not the Bible. Is that moral to tell somebody who they have to love? Oh, yes, definitely. Considering that an absolute moral law giver gave it to them, yeah. Okay, so um, the the part where it says that you can beat them as long as they don't die the next day, is it moral to let them know that they have the opportunity to go so far as to just make sure they don't die the next day? Is Those that... laws are there to protect both the uh, slave owner and the slave. That protects the slave? Yeah, because the slave can't be killed. Is that moral? To me, it is, yes. Because, because an absolute moral, moral lawgiver gave it. Okay, then this is the crux, I think, of the whole entire... Uh, what's hard for me to, to believe, I guess, is that as long as God says it's okay, it's okay. Meaning it doesn't matter what the actual act is. As long as God says it's okay, it's okay. Is there no act that God can command somebody to do that if he commands it would not be um, immoral? You're, you're asking God to do something that is illogical. He would never tell us to do something that was not of him. Well, he did command the genocide of a certain race back then. Women, children, babies, babies who hadn't done anything. Is that moral? They haven't done nothing? Uh, what passage of the scripture are you reading? The kids? The, the babies you think could have done something? No, that's just the wisdom of God. I would like to know, are you talking about the, are you talking about the, the Malachites? Are you talking about the Canaanites? Like, like who are you talking about? The Mal well, I mean, you can, you can choose, put, put one in there. I'm sure they're both, they would both okay. work, but I let's go to the Malachites. About, because Veckel, and Veckel's not here. So if you guys don't mind, I'd like to give him a quick shout out to Veckel. When Veckel goes, oh, the, the, um, the, the, the Amorites or whatever, he'd be saying or whatever. But the point of the matter is, is this, um, uh, those people were not innocent. Those people were were worshiping uh, false idols. They were worshiping false gods, taking their babies mm -hmm. and throwing their babies into the fire. They were they, they, they were doing a lot of abominable things in those countries. And mm -hmm. God told them to go in there in judgment to take out the men, women, and children. That is the reality of war. If you're, if you're not a soldier and you hear somebody telling, telling you to do that, then of course it's going to sound foreign to you. But if you're a soldier... And you're and and, and 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 you're commanded to do something. You go out there and you do it. I would like to know why it would be immoral. Because here's the thing: you take out the adults because the adults are the ones doing the things that they. Um, you take out the adults because they're the ones actually doing the crimes. You take out the children mm -hmm. because you know that when they grow up, they're gonna want to get revenge. And God saw mm -hmm. this in His foreknowledge, and He knew that. That's why He commanded them to do it. And by the way, the Israelites never did what God told them to do. Okay, so so the the since we're at kind of war with or going into war with Syria, and the terrorists that are there in in, in Syria, would it be? I guess it would be okay by your last statement to kill the kids over there as well because they will grow into terrorists themselves. Different scenario. I believe that that if there are terrorists in Syria, the United States of America, if this is the country that's going to go over there and deal with them, we should. Uh, and this is assuming where the, the U.S. is dealing with them. We should do our best to only get the terrorists. But in war, there's always going to be casualties. Why so is it different? Casualties. Why shouldn't we just take out the kids too? Why should we take out the kids? Why do we need to take out the kids? Well, by you, by your last statement, you said that the the um, Malachite children would grow up to be um, uh, men, right. and they would the want Malachi revenge. The situation under that theocracy was different than it is today. Not the same thing. 
so um, the kids, the Amalekite kids, uh, the babies, what did they do wrong that deserves to be killed? God in his foreknowledge, I, from the best of what I can understand, God in his foreknowledge would have seen them growing up to become people that was going to be vengeful and come after the Israelites for what they did. All of them? Yeah. But here's the thing. Israel never did what God told him to do. That's what you got to understand. You're, what do you mean? God ordered it. God ordered it, but they never did it. They did kill the Amalekites. They, didn't, they, they did not commit genocide. As a matter of fact, you can't tell me one time in, in all of the Bible's history in the Old Testament when the Israelites committed genocide on any nation. It never happened. Can you can you point to me where they didn't? I'm not familiar with I'm not familiar with the verses, so I, I'm I'm gonna have to Old look. Testament it up. The Bible, the entire Old Testament. Like like I would need like ten hours to to, to, to to I would I would need a couple of days to read from Genesis. Stay with the Amalekites. Let's just stay with the Amalekites. Where does it say that they didn't kill the Amalekites? They didn't. And I'm not even sure it was the Amalekites. I was just guessing with that one because I don't know specifically what you're talking about. I'm going by your claim. I'm talking about the 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 murder of the. You just told me the story about the, the Amorites. It could be the Amalekites. It could be the Canaanites. I don't know. So you right. actually read the verse and actually show okay. me what you're talking about. I'm just guessing at that point. All right, let's do this then. The when you just said that um, they would grow up to be um, men that would want revenge on the people that killed their, they got had foreknowledge of this. What group was he talking about specifically there? Because that's what you said that. Um, I don't happened. know what specific group it was. I'm simply going by your claim. Okay, so I let's. Know that there's, a, there's a scenario of this in the Bible. Uh, oh, no. King Saul was told. That, that King Saul told, uh, that God told King Saul to go into this land to, to wipe out all of the people of this particular land, and they didn't do it. And, and okay, but, that Saul, Saul wasn't going to be king of Israel no more. He was going to anoint David as could, king. That could be, but there is a group that they did kill them all because, like you said, God had foreknowledge of them growing up and wanting to take revenge. So they did get killed. So let, even, even if we they're not the Amalekites, let's say they're, they're not. Whoever that group was, that did happen to, right? Okay, this is why it's important that you need to read the actual verse that you're talking about. Because here's the thing, okay? When I talk about God's foreknowledge, I'm talking about his wisdom, I'm talking about how he could see find it. Like, all the possible scenarios, and he knew okay. that, that if these babies were spared, they would grow up and get revenge on Israel, but, but, but they, never, they were never killed. So I'm, That's what I'm saying. I need you to read the verse where this was commanded, and then they did as God told them to do. Okay. Give me one second. And then if you don't mind, because you've been asking me a lot of questions, I got some questions for you. Sure. Uh, what, yeah. What scripture was that? Um, it, we don't know. We're, we're trying to look for the Amalekites. Um, okay, I Bible. think uh, Scholar Fitch and just put it in there it says the soldiers brought oh, them God, from the uh his favorite verse <laughs> brought them from the amalekites they spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the lord your god but we totally destroyed the rest yeah it's first samuel 5 uh, 15 3 now go attack the amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them do not spare them put to death men and women and children and infants and cattle and sheep and camels and donkeys so show me in scripture where they actually did that, where it was executed and done. Because scholar of fiction has been told a billion different times that they never did it, and he still is using the same argument. I don't. Oh, um, scholar didn't prepare you for this because if he did, oh lord. I I don't see anything that says that they did not do it, G man. I'm telling you that they didn't. Well, you're you would have to point that out because I'm reading the rest of I'm reading Skyler, the rest of it. Do me a favor, do me a favor. If, if Skylar's in the live chat, why don't you ask Skylar? Has Veku or myself ever pointed out to him that they never actually did this? Just, just ask. Well, I'm at, I'm asking you to point out to me where they didn't. I don't know. I, I I didn't come in here prepare to come in here and talk about the Amalekites. I came in here to talk about morality, which is a greater okay. issue here. You understand okay, what I'm saying? Let's, yeah. let's see this. Hold on. I want to get to, I want to find out whether or not they did or not. You, it's going to be a while. So it, should we go on? Uh, can, can you pull that up real quick, Frankie? I've got um, something else right here. I, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm seeing everything that I'm seeing that they did. I'm I'm, I'm on the um the the website of John Alistair, who is a biblical scholar, and he's going through why this had to happen, but it it did happen. It does not say yeah, anything and, about it. First Samuel 15, it says that Saul disobeyed him, like I told you. I can screen share it if you like. He disobeyed him. Please. So is it Saul offers a burnt offering, the Lord rejects him and choose another captain over his people? Is that it? No, no. Um, as far as God ordering uh, Saul to do a particular thing, he didn't do it. You know what I mean? He, he didn't he didn't do everything that, that, that God told him to do. So God rejected him as being the king. You know well, what I mean? He about First Samuel 15, right? 15.3. That, yeah. that, that talks about Saul disobeying the Lord. No, that talks about going and attacking the Amalekites. Yeah, and keep reading. That's why you got to, like, if you're going to talk about this, I, I did gotta, keep reading the text. I, but but, you bring but like while you have it up, screen share it and show me where he didn't do this. You got to read from verse one to verse 34 if you want the full story. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm looking at it. I don't want to do that because it's not necessary because I already know that's not the case and it's not my claim. If I actually start reading it and trying to show you this, the then I'm the one who, 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 who's helping you with your claim and I'm not doing that. I'm not sure that. I, I didn't make that claim. Godless Iowa sure said that disobedience was the burnt offering. Okay, but they didn't. But they never wiped out all of the Amalekites. So. Okay. Um, well, the, but Samuel said, "When, when then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears? What is this lowering of cattle that I hear?" Saul answered, "The soldiers brought them, uh, and from the Amalekites they spared the best of the sheep and cattle and destroyed." The rest. Or delight in the burnt offerings, obey the sacrifice. I have sinned. I have violated the. Let's see. Yeah, it says to um, the Lord delights in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the Lord. To obey is better than to sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebell rebellion is like sin of. Uh, divisiveness and arrogance like the evil of adultery. Because you've rejected. The word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. But that's talking about a that's talking about the the, the burnt again. Offering. If you read on verse one to verse thirty four, it tells you that he did not do what he told him to do regarding the Amalekites. No, it doesn't. I'm I'm I've just read all the way to thirty four. It does not say that. Did he spare the king, yes or no? Did he spare the who? The king. The Amalekite king. Did he spare him, yes or no? Okay, so he spared the king. Okay, what about the rest of the Amalekites? That's well, what we're talking well, about. In order for it to be genocide, everyone would have to be killed. Did okay, he I the see. King? I, know. I see. No, he no he he's he spared the king. So that that means right, that right. Um, and, I, I, and, and it wasn't just the king too. But the, the the point you had a point with this regarding morality, right? Like you're yeah. asking all these questions because I got some questions I like to ask you. Sure. Well, well is that moral? Do I believe is moral for a moral lawgiver to give a law and have people follow it? Yes. And so do okay. you. I do not, but I, I think it's telling that if God says it's okay to kill um, a bunch of people, even the babies, or to take them into captivity or to for an, a, a rape, a rapist to marry their, their victim, then in your view, that is... Yeah, because yeah. I'm looking at it. Let me ask you something. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. Did you oh, take, uh, did you take uh, a history uh, as a uh, child or a teenager or whatever? I I did absolutely. Okay, have you ever had to just look at a particular culture and only that particular culture and not compare it to another culture? What do you mean by that? Okay, like like like, have you have you studied tribalism? Have you studied like a specific group of peoples in certain parts of the world? You know what I mean? Like 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 it, if you look at Israel and how Israel was ran, see, in order for you to say that that's immoral, you have to be comparing it to either the modern day world or your own moral basis. But no, if you I think all if you look at it objectively from the world that they were living in, there's no way in the world you can prove that that that, that was wrong. Absolutely not. I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I think that no matter what, how that was wrong. Show I me from their perspective how it was wrong. I don't. From their perspective, number one, we can start with the woman who was raped. I do not think that she would not in any. Rape, not with the rape. We're talking okay. about 
in this sense with the Amalekites. Let's start with that. Explain to me how taking them out is wrong. Because remember, in order for it to be wrong, it has to be a law there somewhere. So show me how it's wrong. Because I don't think that it's ever right to stab a child that hasn't done a thing to anybody. And what is that based on? What do I base that in? The fact yeah. that uh, the the fact that a kid should not be killed. Like for from my from my point of view, I don't want to be killed, right? I don't want to kill anybody. Now, I think in terms of like self defense, there are there are scenarios where that's okay. But I believe by the philosophy of the least amount of harm, most amount of good, and so killing a child falls in that um, least amount of harm category. You don't want to harm a child. And okay, okay. That, 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 that's respectable. Can you tell me? And it because you since you brought the Amalekites and you're bringing up all these Bible verses, don't get mad at me when I do this. Okay, can you go me in the scenario that is going on? And, and not even Skylar can answer this. Okay, can mm -hmm. you explain to me in this scenario without contradicting what you just told me um, mm -hmm. um, um, about wanting to uh, do the least, the least amount of harm? How destroying the Amalekites in that particular situation was not the best option. In that particular environment, in that part of the world at that time. Once again, these people were, their sin was that they worshipped a false god. That in no way affects people around them. So for a tribe to be commanded to go in there and kill them just for worshipping a different god is the most, that's the maximum amount of harm. Because it didn't concern them. It wasn't that the Amalekites were attacking Israel, they were wiped out for having false gods. So that falls into the maximum uh, harm, like, absolutely. No, no, and, and, and I hope Scholar didn't give you that answer. That's horrible. Uh, number one, they, they didn't just worship a false god, which, according to scripture, is worthy of the death penalty, according right. to scripture, okay? That's right. number, number two, they would take in their babies. I want you to imagine a campfire, and they would take in their kids and throwing them into a campfire. They were throwing them through the fire. They were doing a lot of disgusting things in their nation. And you can sure. you actually read the first five books of the Old Testament, what the Israelites are forbidden to do. Those mm -hmm. other nations were doing those things. Okay, so let's say I agree to that. Animals. It was sacrificing their babies. They were worshiping other gods. What God was doing with the Israelites was this. He was administering, he was administering a judgment. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, you cannot, you cannot come out in our modern day world today and say, hmm, God was wrong for administering judgment on people that he created in which these people decided that they wasn't going to worship the true and living God, that they was going to do evil and they was going to live any kind of way they wanted. In order for you to say that, you would have to argue that God doesn't have the right to do to do what, what he wants with his creation. First, I would have to presuppose he on that topic existed. Too. First, I would, have to, I would have to believe he existed. But to go back to your example, let's say I yeah, grant you that they were to make this argument. Well, hold on. Let's say that I grant you that he throw that the, these Amalekites were throwing babies into a fire, right? Let's say that is true. Um, should the babies that are left should they be responsible for the ones that were throwing babies into the fire? Again, when it comes to God's foreknowledge, because God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, He could see what they would do if they were adults. They would get revenge against the nation of Israel. And All of them. The least amount of harm, it All of them. better to take out the entire country than it would be to allow a couple of them to live so that they can create a revolt and cause all kinds of harm to people when they got older. Does that does that feel all as horrible as it is to hear that? Let me ask you a question now because you asked me a lot of questions and, and I want to relate it to the Amalekai question you asked. Hold on, I do have a... Um... I did have a super chat that said they, um, 31 of, I'm, I'm going to really kind of fuck up this word is Medanites. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take vengeance on the Medanites for the children of Israel after you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people saying, arm some of your cells for war and let them go against the Medanites to take vengeance for the Lord of Midian. I'll probably, like I said, I messed it up. My question is this. Okay. Let's say, and, and atheist actually presented me with this question a few years ago. Let's say there was a flying saucer. No, 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 no. You know, let's get really crazy. Let's say there was a Death Star above Earth right now and whatnot, right? And they was going to push the button to wipe up the entire planet. But they said, Kyle, in order for you to, in, in, in order for us not 
to blow your planet into smithereens and destroy everybody on the planet, men, women, and children, would you be willing to rape your sister in order to save all the different people on the planet? Yes or no? I can't answer that. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck is all Think about that, though. You would have to. You would want to do the thing that caused the least amount of harm. I mean, it would, would be your sister would, according to you, that. right? It would be just be your sister. So they're saying that you got to rape your sister in order, in order for the whole planet to be spared. So by your by you using that line of argumentation, you would have to be willing to rape your sister according to your subject your subjective moral values in order to right. protect the world from being blown to smithereens by this Death Star. Your okay. web browser history must be interesting. <laughs> okay, so I, I oh, don't you have like... no idea to keep wrong with these knuckleheads that sat in my room before. You have no idea. <laughs> to answer your question, um, I, I or to try to answer your, to your question, I don't know what I would do in that scenario. I would hope that I would have the um, wherewithal to choose to do the right thing if there is a right thing in that scenario, but I don't Everybody know how. Die. Huh? Everybody's dead, pretty much. Everybody's screwed. If it depends on you doing the cause doing the thing that causes the least amount of harm, then we're all dead, then right? The least amount of harm would be in in this wild scenario would be raping your sister. Yeah. So would you do it? If it saved that's, that's the, basis if, for if the rest of humanity, the I mean I would, morality, I would the, amount of harm, the basis for your morality is the least amount of harm. So that means you gotta yeah. rape your sister. Now you know what I would do in that situation? You wanna know what I would do? Uh, please, I'm dying. I would let this planet be go boom. This planet would be destroyed because there ain't no way on God's green earth I would do that to my sister. This earth is done. Everybody's dead if it's dependent on me doing that. Okay, so I, f I fail to see what where your point is with that question. Because, because you're saying that it's wrong for God to, to, to tell Israel, somebody's got to go, the, 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 to tell Israel to go into the land of Israel Right. And kill all the men, women, and children there in order to stop the wickedness that's going on in that region of the world. You got a problem. Whoa, 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 I've heard yes. you say they would do this when they've used your yes. argument before. So Hope, you have hopefully. to have the same, the same attitude if you have that as your worldview. Hopefully, I would have the the wherewithal to do that. In, in your in your crazy scenario, then raping your sister would be the right thing to do in that case because you. That's, that's not my a, crazy scenario. That's an atheist scenario. An atheist came in my room and said that to me one day using the same argumentation that you're using. Either Plain way, they have so it, much love that they'll be willing to rape this one person. In order to yeah. save the lives of the whole world, we're talking about seven billion people. Right, that's, that's, die that's if you that would be the right thing to do. So in order to cause the least amount of harm, according to right. your argumentation, you right. have to rape your sister. We're in agreement. We're in agreement. Right. right. So you would do it. I hope so. To save seven billion people, I hope so. Yeah, you absolutely. Hope so. You hope so, or you know so. I hope so. I'm not in that. I, I can't say for certain because I'm not in that situation, but I would hope. Right. So I have to call baloney on your basis for morality when you say that that, that, that is based on the least amount of harm. In you what way? I mean? That is the least amount of harm in that. That is the least amount of harm in that case. I'm just sitting in my case because you want to know why? Tell me to do that. Boom. This world is gone. Right. It but in gone. that scenario, that is the least that that causes the least amount of harm. I'm not raping my sister. It ain't happening. The only okay, that's thing I would do that if that yeah, alien from outer space, you know, I know, uh, mind control me and force me to do it. That'd be the only way that's going to happen. This is bizarre. This has, in, in we agree, we're in agreement there. That would be the least amount of harm. That doesn't violate. And by the my, way, you made some predictions in the beginning of this video that are not coming to pass today. I'm just letting you know that. This took a weird I, turn. I, I yeah, hope that prediction is that you claiming victory at the end of it. I think that's no, the one. Not a debate. Kind of having a discussion. So how can um, I think? But let's but let's go back to let's go back to your example. Um, how does that in any way compare to a group of people that didn't have a choice? There wasn't an alien Death Star. There wasn't the option to rape your sister. They were just wiped out because God was it's jealous for worshiping another uh, now, idol. Hypothetical. Okay, I got a question real quick. Uh, Godless Iowan just um actually I got two questions. Um one, Godless Iowan's uh asked you G Man, 
What if God told you to violate your sister? Would you do it? God told me to violate. God would never tell me to do that because that would violate. Well, in that in this scenario, God kind of said, uh, "G man, I cannot do anything that violates His nature." And He would never tell me to violate His nature. He would never contradict His nature at all. Well, I mean, Kyle didn't accept your highly unlikely scenario. I think the least you can do is accept this. Well, I'm, I'm doing that. But the problem is when you're talking about the God of the Bible, there's not one scenario in all of Scripture where God is doing something that goes against his nature. Not he one never time. says not, do not rape. He never says do not rape. Uh, there are laws against rape in the Bible. Show me. Show you. No, I'm not doing that right now, dude. You can Google it and you can find the laws. There are laws in the Bible that are against rape. I'm not doing I that have. right now. I have to come here to defend whether or not the Bible defends rape or not. I came here to talk about morality, but there are laws in the Bible that punishes people that do that kind of thing. There is no thing that says do not rape. So God, that isn't against God's you nature. Got he that, be, got that he from be Hebrew, willing to tell you to rape. Is on evilbible.com. Have you read the Old Testament? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so you read the Old Testament? So sure. I will not. So, so if I, if I ask you to give me five minutes to show you the laws. That says that if you rape, you're either dead or you're going to be punished somehow. Yeah. If I show you laws that goes directly against rape, then then are you going to uh, like, like, like admit that you didn't read the Old Testament? Because it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I've, I've never seen the Bible say, uh, do not rape. Show me. Okay, just give me a minute here and I'll find it for you. Also, right? um, real quick, uh, Gallus Engineer says, the moral question is using the wrong fire for an altar and a fist an offense fuck i can talk for an altar and offense worthy of death yes <laughs> okay um well Paul, I guess that was <laughs> yeah i think it was the g-man yeah he's he's uh he's indisposed at the moment he's looking for those uh those passages <clears throat> tricky, tricky passages. So while he's doing that, um, since Frank and I have been kind of quiet this whole time, maybe it might be a good idea for us to play a, a game of highly unlikely scenario. Would you rather? <laughs> oh God. Or, or, or do you want to skip? Rain Florence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I found right. it. All right, here we go. It's in Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two, and, and instead of me reading it, I'm just going to play the audio. How about that? So that sure. you can actually hear it. All right. Okay. This is from gotquestions.org, um, uh, all right? Okay. So, play this so that you can hear this. Hopefully you can hear it. All right, you ready? If we get a yep. copyright claim for this, I'm going to be so pissed. Uh, okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. I'm just messing with you. All right, are you sure? Because I can read it if you want. It's going to take a while because then I have to click some links in order to get to the verses. It's a lot of them. You're, you're called, man. All right, so I'm going to play an audio, okay? Here we go. Listen. The following is a presentation of God Questions Ministries. What does the Bible say about rape? The Bible does address the issue of rape. As expected, when the Bible mentions the crime of rape, it is depicted as a gross violation of God's design for the treatment of the human body. The Bible condemns rape whenever it is mentioned. For example, there is a particular passage in the laws given to the nation of Israel before entering the Promised Land under Joshua's leadership. This passage, Deuteronomy chapter 22, spoke directly against forcing a woman into a sexual encounter against her will, or what we know today as rape. This command was meant to protect women and to protect the nation of Israel from committing sinful actions. Deuteronomy 22 verses 25 through 27 specifies the punishment the Mosaic law required for a man who raped a betrothed woman. The man was to be killed by stoning, while the woman was considered innocent. Though the Mosaic law was for the nation of Israel during the time of Moses, the principle is clear that rape is sinful in the eyes of God, and under the law, led to the most extreme punishment possible, death for the rapist. There are some difficult passages in the Old Testament in relation to this issue. One is Deuteronomy 22, verses 28 and 29. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her and they are discovered, he shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver. He must marry the young woman, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. If the rape victim was not betrothed, then the rapist faced different consequences. We must see Deuteronomy 22, verses 28 and 29 through the lens of ancient culture. In those days, social convention treated women poorly. They couldn't own property. 
they couldn't get a job to support themselves. If a woman had no father, husband, or son, she had no legal protection. Her options were slavery or prostitution. If an unmarried woman wasn't a virgin, it was extremely difficult for her to get married. If she wasn't marriageable, her father didn't have much use for her. God's punishment on the rapist of a virgin, a monetary fine, and lifelong responsibility was designed to deter rape by holding the rapist responsible for his actions. He ruined her life. It was his responsibility to support her for the rest of her life. This may not sound fair to modern ears, but we don't live in the same culture they did. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, Prince Amnon raped his half-sister Tamar. The horror and shame of being violated, yet unmarried, made Tamar beg him to marry her, her half-brother, even after he had rejected her. And her full brother Absalom was so disgusted with the situation that he murdered Amnon. That's how highly virginity in women was prized back then. Mm. Critics of the Bible also point to Numbers chapter 31 and similar passages in which the Israelites were allowed to take female captives from nations they conquered. Critics say this is an example of the Bible's condoning or even promoting rape. However, the passage says nothing about raping the captive women. It is wrong to assume that the captive women were to be raped. The soldiers were commanded to purify themselves and their captives in verse 19. Rape would have violated this command. The women who were taken captive are never referred to as sexual objects. Did the captive women likely eventually marry amongst the Israelites? Yes. Is there any indication that rape or sex slavery was forced upon the women? Absolutely not. In the New Testament, rape is not mentioned directly, but within the Jewish culture of the day, rape would have been considered sexual immorality. Jesus and the apostles spoke against sexual immorality even offering it as justifiable grounds for divorce. Further, the New Testament is clear that Christians are to obey the laws of their governing authorities. Not only is rape morally wrong, it is also wrong according to the laws of the land. As such, anyone who would commit this crime should expect to pay the consequences, including arrest and imprisonment. To the victims of rape, we must offer much care and compassion. God's word often speaks about helping those in need, and in vulnerable situations. Christians should model the love and compassion of Christ by assisting victims of rape in any way possible. People are responsible for the sins they commit, including rape. However, no one is beyond the grace of God. Even to those who have committed the vilest of sins, God can extend forgiveness if they repent and turn from their evil ways. This does not remove the need for punishment, according to the law, but it can offer hope and the way to a new life. God question. Now let me ask you a question. If that society thought that um that that, that wanting because you heard what he said about the culture and everything and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. If that society thought that um that 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 when a woman was raped and the the person who did the raping had to marry um the woman that was raped, why would mm -hmm. Tamar beg her half brother after after he did this to her? Why would she beg him to marry her? Because as soon as it's found that she that that this woman is not a virgin, no one's gonna want to marry her. They couldn't own private property. They were considered uh -huh. second class people back then. So it was mm -hmm. very, very, very important that they save themselves for their mate. You understand what I'm saying? So again, there are laws in the Bible against rape. You say that there are no laws against slavery. I can go to the same site and have them tell you the same thing that there are laws in the Bible for slavery. Matt Dillahoney will tell you that there are laws. Um, on 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 how to treat your slave in Israel. Oh, I, I don't doubt that. You didn't um, you didn't refute my claim that it doesn't um, not condone rape. They get they get the death penalty if you uh, rape a betrothed woman. That is not the case for virgins who are not married. That's the you get the option to uh, marry that person. That There's is the, a punishment though. And that's that is and not a you're punishment. Ignoring, you're ignoring the fact that the man who committed that crime in Israel now has to marry that woman who that, remember women back then couldn't own private property. Mm -hmm. They didn't own anything. They were second class mm -hmm. citizens back then. And then they depended. And I'm sorry for the feminists that are listening to this, but this is just a fact. There was a time when women had to depend on men to take care of them. Mm -hmm. they, this, this is not that wasn't the United States back then. So they depended on a man to take care of them. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. 
If a woman still, was not a virgin, she was not desirable back then. It still you know, doesn't. Pay. So God doesn't it, condone it because he's punishing the rapist in each and every scenario. If he condoned it, he would not be punishing it. Why not just say don't rape anybody? <sighs> if they're going to get the death penalty... Anyway, anyway, so anyway, anybody can rewind this and, and, and they can hear what he said on here. There are laws. They only get the death penalty if they're married, G man. That's not the case. Twenty-two, another passage. The laws are there, and they tell you that 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 it was illegal to do that in Israel. You were killed if you did it. So stop it. I never heard that. I just heard that that you get the death penalty if you if you rape a That's betrothed you woman. Bible. You need to read the Old Testament. I really, I, I think it's you that need to read it. A little bit more than not me. I, I think I got what I needed to out of, out of this. See, I don't think that that's, okay, I don't so think I have, that it's, I have my questions for you. I actually only want to sure. let me ask one question because this goes back to what, um, but, but wait a minute. I only asked him one question. Though. You're going to ask, was, let me ask this and you can ask uh, all the questions you want, but yeah. it goes back to the God. Um, uh, if God told you to rape your sister, um, Paul, Paul Ogier asked, asked you, man, if God would tell him to rape his sister as a test, like God tested Abraham and his sons, how far, how, how far would he go? I went and do it, and he would never tell me to do it because that would go directly against his nature. See, in the scenario with where, where, where Abraham was asked to, was asked to offer his only begotten to offer his son, that was a type of Christ. It was a type of it was an example of what God would later do with his only with, with his only begotten son for the sins of the whole world. Now I have my questions that I like to ask him regarding his morality because I've been questioning. Sure. I know, but I mean, God asked Abraham to kill his son. That goes against his uh, nature. Uh, no, it don't. It's it's kind of in the Ten Commandments. No, 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 it doesn't. No, it, it, the word "kill" there. They're talking about murder there, unlawful killing. That is unlawful killing. He told he told <laughs> killing your to kill unlawful son. killing. What, what what law is God under for that to be unlawful killing? Thou shalt not kill. That's that's well, one you, of the ten commandments. In Genesis, there was no Exodus yet. That's in Exodus twenty. But so still, that, that goes against his. I mean, I'm not trying to gang up on you here. I'm just trying to get this uh, uh, kind of thing answered. But it still goes against his nature. I don't think you guys understand something here. The first book in the the first book in the Bible is the book of Genesis. The second book is Exodus. Okay, mm -hmm. that happened in Genesis. There was no law. The yet. killing is still killing, and it's still and that the was same a law thing. for man. That was not a law for God. Ah, uh, now 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 I have my questions. I like to ask Kyle if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Please. Kyle kept asking me about my Bible and everything and whatnot and everything. Kyle, let me ask you something, Kyle. Sure. Do you believe that it is moral for um? For now, we're looking strictly, strictly from your worldview now, okay? okay? Do you believe that it is moral to troll people on the internet? Do I believe it's, a, it's moral? I would say no. Do you think it's moral to be an internet bully? No, absolutely not. It's not that's not moral, no. Not a moral thing at all, based on what? Based on the fact that I wouldn't want to be bullied, or I wouldn't want to be made fun of, or I wouldn't want to be trolled. Richard Dawkins once said uh, in a speech, mock them, ridicule them in public. Would you consider that to be moral in your worldview or immoral in your worldview? In me personally, I would consider that to be immoral. I have several several family members that are super religious, and I don't I, I don't mock them. I don't openly uh, make fun of them. I don't uh, I don't do any of those things. Just because Richard Dawkins says to do something, he doesn't speak for all atheists. I don't um, I, I don't condone that either. I don't do live by that. People. Say that again. Do you mock religious people? Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's only, let me get this straight here, okay? You don't listen to Richard Dawkins when he's saying mock them, ridicule them in public, but then you are openly admitting to mocking Christians on the internet. And you just said it was immoral. I must have that's immoral, then that means you do immoral things and you're admitting it. I must have misunderstood your last question. Did you ask me, do I think it's moral to mock Christians or immoral? Yeah. You think it's moral to mock people? No. Have I have I mocked Christians? Yes. Do you have absolute moral standards? No. Why not? I don't think you can. I think that your standards are going to be different for, uh, for everybody. I don't think that you can have a certain set of um, standards. I just, I can only speak for me. Is God immoral for um, allowing slavery in the Old Testament? I think so, yes. Is God immoral for um, 
for not using the words in the Bible, uh, I don't condone rape. I don't think that's a, a question of morality. I think that's a, just a question of, um, I think. Okay, should I'll, he... I'll, I'll rephrase. I'll rephrase. Okay. Um, is it is it immoral of God to make, I'm sorry, to command the rapist to marry his victim? I think so, yeah. You think it is? Is that absolutely true, yes or no? For me, yeah. So you have absolute moral values then? When you when you say absolute moral values, are you talking about like objective morale? Like I can only speak objective for what's true for me. Values. You believe it is the absolute. It is the absolute fact of life that, that 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 that. Well, not just for you, because that's, that's, that's all I can speak. If that's only true for you. Then, then, for God, it's perfectly okay for him to to tell the Israelites to do whatever he wants them to do, because then you have these subjective moral values that says sure. that in your little own little world. Then sure. that's just not nobody else, no other atheists and whatnot. That for you it is immoral, but for God, but but for God, there's nothing wrong with that. And if that's true, then how do you go about determining whether or not a person is doing something good or evil, or something moral or immoral? Again, based on my philosophy of doing the least harm and the most good. Now, could God say that He has every moral right to do that? Sure. Could you say that you have that you think God has every moral right to do that? Absolutely, and you did. I can only speak for well, me. I, I can't tell if I shoot you in the head right now, if I come to your house right now and blow your head off. Uh -huh. should, if I went to your house right now and blew your head off and said, according to my moral standards, there's nothing wrong with doing this, should I get thrown in jail? Yeah, there are people that do that. Okay, there but I people. shouldn't go to jail, though, according to your worldview. According to your worldview, I should be able to get off scot-free if I go in your home and blow your head off. No, I didn't say anything about getting off scot-free. You broke a law. That has nothing to do with morality. That's a law. Well, okay. It has nothing to do with morality. See, but you do believe that, that most people on planet Earth, matter of fact, everybody on planet Earth, including the psychos who don't think about what they're doing before they do it, or some of them actually plan to do it, believe that, that if they take their gun and blow your head off, whether it be for fun, entertainment, or whatever, and they do it unlawfully, that they should be thrown in jail. Right? Me, me personally, yes. Absolutely. Okay. So you do have absolute moral standards then? I have moral standards for myself. I don't know that I would call them absolute moral standards. I can only say like what I would do or how I would feel in these situations. Are there people that go out there and shoot people, mass shootings that think that they're justified in doing so themselves? Yes, absolutely. They do that. So why are they wrong for doing it? In your worldview, they're never wrong. You got your opinion, no, they got their opinion. That's what you're mistaken. In my worldview, they are wrong because I wouldn't go out and shoot people. I wouldn't want to harm they're somebody. They're not wrong. In my worldview, they're wrong. Get this, 100% yeah. of the time. In your worldview, sure. they're only wrong according to you, but it's not wrong according to that person. Let me tell you something, man. Anytime a person pulls that trigger, that, unless it's for self-defense, that person mm -hmm. is going to feel guilty for what they did to a certain degree. And they're going to run. But they you're talking illegal. You're, you're going legal. You're going legal. Well, you got to talk about just the act. Get my argument, though. Because you you you're arguing against God executing the amount. We're gonna go back to the Amalekites. You're arguing against God saying that it's morally. Um, you're saying that God is immoral for going in in in, in this land and wiping out all the men, women, and children for crimes right. that is, for crimes that these people have committed. Right now, obviously, you don't want them killed, even though they were taking their babies and dangling them over the fire and putting them in there and doing all kinds of ungodly garbage in that nation that went directly against what God created them to do. I think those people should be punished. I don't think that you can hold another kid responsible for what adults are doing in that, um, in that well, camp. The truth in that is, is that those kids are going to grow up and they're going to want revenge. And the way to have the least amount of harm is to make sure that they never grow up and do that. And by the way, and by the way, okay, they never killed those children. Saul didn't listen to God. Yes, he did. You know. Yes, he did. So, did not go read the you never read the text before do you? you need to go read it did you we not read a minute ago that he let he spared the king what about the rest of them the closest time god has ever came to genociding anybody was during the flood and he spared eight people so he's not even guilty of genocide at that point i'm, I'm pretty sure he would be guilty of genocide at that point no pretty. he would not in order to be in order for it to be genocide everybody dies where do everybody you, where do you the get majority, that? everybody dies where do you get that definition What's the definition of genocide? The mass extinction I of a race. Right now. Now, I, would, I would say that's a mass extinction of a race, wouldn't you? Yeah, they was not extinct because he spared eight people on the ark. Okay, 
I got you. <laughs> so it's not genocide. <laughs> We would differ on that. I think. Point is this. I believe in absolute moral values. I don't try to make excuses for people who lie, whether you tell it for a good reason or a bad reason. Lie. A lie and is you that. Lie. You, you understand? The moral lawgiver, the, the moral lawgiver mm-hmm. has the right to forgive that person and let that person go sky free if he so wish. Uh-huh. And he has the right to judge to, to punish that person. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Your worldview says that if a person lies, it just depends on on each individual's opinion. We can't know. Like that. No, that is not what my worldview said. You are you are grossly misrepresenting my worldview. I'm not misrepresenting your your your, your worldview. Yes. I'm going yes. to I'm going to its ultimate conclusion. If you thought this way and everybody thought this way, that everybody can just live according to them with, with the way they want to live, we will have another Noah situation in here again. You're talking about um you're talking about pun what should happen to them after the act. I'm focused on the act itself. It's not for me to decide what happens to that is person. Wrong 100% at the time, yes or no. I can only say that the act based is on rape wrong 100% of the time. Yes or no. It's rape wrong 100% of the time. Absolutely. Great. So you have, you have, a, you have at least one objective moral value and your objective moral value is that you believe that rape is hundred percent of the time wrong. Here's the thing though. I don't think that that does not mean that just because I have an absolute standard on rape, that objective morality exists because that, could be different to somebody else. Do you well, follow it me? Very much exists. It, it very much exists because even you can't make an excuse for a rapist. In order me, for in order for objective right. moral values not to exist, oh my God. You, have right. to say, you have to give me a fictional right. example where rape was okay. I can't. I can't know. But there are people that can. Okay. So 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 give me an example. Somebody in the geek room. You have my permission to ask the audience. Give me, because they don't even know. I've been arguing with these guys for years about this. Give me one example where rape is okay. You're not following what I'm saying. Let me, let me, me, hold on. Let me, let me, let me follow you here, okay? When is it right to rape a child? G-Man, G-Man, follow me here, okay? Follow me here. I don't think it's ever right to rape, okay? Me, Kyle. Kyle does not ever think it's right to rape. There are people outside, people that do it every day, because they rape who have in their head said, this is an okay thing to do. And they know it's wrong and they run from the law. Right. But that but, means but, that- but, 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 but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just missed it. You just missed it. They what? know it's wrong and they run from the law. Some of them do. There are people who don't think it's wrong. There are people who can justify it in their head. And how many times have you seen somebody rape somebody and then don't, and, and then, and, and, and then say, I didn't break no law. I didn't do nothing wrong. And I hide from the police and eventually get the cuffs put on them. Rape is wrong 100% at the time, man. Come on, man. But it is There are people. What about the, what about in the compounds, in the uh the Latter-day Saint uh compounds, all of those uh polygamists down there that take their their kids to like like when um what's his name? Jeff, whatever, the the polygamous leader was down there, and he was willingly raping children there and everybody there thought that that was a good thing because it was for the prophet they, they thought it was good they because thought it was godly they thought it, it was godly because the police wasn't there that's why they, thought, they it thought it was godly because the, because, the, because the final authority wasn't there and that would be the police if the come police on, had told them they would have went to jail oh, for doing I'm, just wrong. Proving that, I'm just proving that an absolute uh objective morality doesn't exist because they thought is that uh, absolutely godly? True? Is that absolutely true? That they thought it was godly? Absolutely. No, 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 no. I, no not that it's godly. You said that absolute moral values don't exist. Is that absolutely true? Oh, are, are you trying to to presup me on a no, on a great question? Yes or no? I'm G-Man, not trying to come on. I'm, you. Is look, that absolutely look, true? Yes listen, or no? G man, look, I have watched you in debates several times. I've watched people like Sai. You're not going to catch me. This is in not the, a debate. This is a discussion. The, you're not going to catch me in the is that absolutely true part. Okay, what so is it absolutely true? Listen, what you're doing now is a tactic to diverge because you're in a corner, and I've seen it happen many I'm times. I'm not in a corner. I'm not in a corner. I'm asking you a question. And you're afraid you're to answer. Corner. It's real absolutely quick. true. Hold on, real quick. Uh, said, I think every question. I'm sorry. One second. He said he would answer every question. He did not answer that one when I asked him. Is it absolutely true? He didn't is answer that abso- question. Is it absolutely true that absolute morality does not exist? Uh, is it absolutely true that absolute morality does not exist? No. I didn't ask that, you that, though. I asked you, is it absolutely true that absolute, uh, the absolute morality uh, is not real? That's why I asked you. 
Is it absolutely true that absolute morality is not real? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so then you have absolute moral values. Then. No, that is not what that means. No. No. <laughs> G-man. Listen, dude, listen, G-man. listen, 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 listen. You already yeah, said in every situation that that rape is wrong. If the moment you say that, you have an for absolute me. Value. So don't give me. For me. When for you say, me. Right, you keep saying it, you keep proving me right. When you sit there and you say that you believe that rape is wrong all the time, then right. guess what? Whoa, 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 I got a better one for you. Is genocide Please. wrong all the time? Absolutely. Well, according to you, it's never. No, you have absolute moral values. No, no. Did Hitler? Did Hitler think that genocide was? Did Hitler think that genocide was absolutely? We're talking about about you. We're talking about you. Besides, that wasn't genocide. He didn't get all the Jews. I'm proving. I'm proving that absolute morality does not exist. And and I quote that he believes that genocide is wrong all the time. And if genocide. all the time, they, you have absolute moral value. I'm wait until you finish so that, that, that I can speak, okay? I'm going to wait in, until you finish, and then oh, when okay, you're okay, finished, okay, okay. let okay. me speak. Yeah. Okay. I'm proving to you that absolute morality does not exist. Now, are my morals absolute for me all the time? I would like to think so. I would like to think that I would always think that rape is a bad thing. However, just because I think that those are always going to be true, that does not mean that objective morality exists because obviously in Hitler's case, he did not feel that genocide was a bad thing because he attempted it. So that means objective morality does not exist because I have an opinion on it and Hitler had an opinion on it and they're different, meaning they're not the same, meaning there cannot be absolute morality. Okay, okay. okay. In order for something... And I don't know why you don't understand this, considering your evolutionist and everything. See, in order for something, in order for something to not exist, you can't find it anywhere on planet Earth. You can't find it anywhere, ever, anywhere, ever. Here's the problem: you already admitted that 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 rape is wrong all the time. You already admitted that genocide is wrong all the time. So I found. Hold on one minute. I found absolute moral values in you. I know I have absolute moral values, so they they do exist. Try again. I don't know what I need to try again. I said that for me, I would hope that I would think that rape is always wrong. We take questions from the audience. <laughs> I, I I don't know why you're not why you're not getting that, but I mean, <laughs> I think needs to tell you later. Can, can you <laughs> can you uh, uh, get the question? I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I, I don't think that I've. I appreciate this I've, respectful conversation, though. I really do. I didn't win nothing. If this ain't a debate, this is a discussion. This ain't a debate. Yeah. I didn't win nothing. All right, so you yeah, ready to so, take some questions? Yeah, that's a good sure. question. I'm just going to keep repeating myself then. <laughs> sure. All right, so if anybody wants to ask a question, the easiest way, I can see it on chat, but sometimes I'll lose it, but in our Discord. Um, all right, let me see. This is, uh, I got a couple from Ice at the Regional. Uh, if animal acts moral, if an animal acts moral, what we consider moral, was that dog divinely inspired and if so why did god cherry pick that dog if a dog was moral yeah if an animal was moral i don't think you can determine whether or not an animal was moral or immoral because a dog and a cat and, and, and animals act on instinct they don't know nothing about principles or anything like that so okay um this is a good one that I, I actually really like. Uh, she uh, same from uh, same person. I said uh, I would like to know if he considers witch burning moral and what he thinks about Christians who do think it's moral. Without using the they're not really Christians um, kind of thing. So they're asking me: Is it moral to burn witches? Is only moral when they when the lawgiver tells you that you have permission to do it when the final and 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 when the final authority get tells you that you can do it, that's when it's okay. That's the best I can give you because that's a broad question. I would need to know scenario, country, situation, and all that. Um, again, stuff. like back in um, with the Salem witch trials, if you were found to be a witch, uh, it was more the well, witch uh, burning was more in uh, England, but here you was hanged automatically if you was found a witch. Do you believe um, in witches though? 
Yeah, I believe that witches exist and witchcraft is a very was a very real thing. You can Google it. They have schools on YouTube about how to be a witch. There's Wicca and there's, there's pagan religions all over the place. So this, this is a real thing that's on here. And they really do believe the thing. As a matter of fact, I believe in this community that we got we got at least three of them that that that, that practices um uh, either so, Wicca or yeah. or or some form of it. Uh, if we're talking about the Salem don't witch trials, to live. if we're talking about the Salem witch trials, no, I don't believe that was a good thing at all. But I also know the whole story about the Salem witch trials. So. Google witch. No, I don't believe that. That was moral. No. We're actually getting a, a good bit many. Oh, I base that in. Let me see if I can uh, scroll down real quick. Uh, the Gallus Iowans, if the morality of the Bible times was different from the morality of today, then doesn't this admit that morality is not objective and is subjective based on culture, culture and time period? Did you read that question again? Beautiful question. If the morality of the Bible, biblical times was different from the morality of today, then doesn't this admit that morality is not objective and is subjective based on cu culture and time period? I think that's a broad question again, because I mean, it's a good question, believe it or not. That's, a, that's probably the best question of the day. But um, but that's broad. Uh, you have to narrow it down a little bit for me before, for me to give him an answer, because I understand, I think, what he's trying to say, but it depends on whose morality you're talking about. Like, they would I can narrow it down. A little bit for me. I can narrow it down. Let's go back with the, the examples that we used with the rape thing. If if the 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 law where the attacker could marry the person that he raped back then was a thing due to culture and the time period, but now it's not. So which one would be moral, which one is not moral, and why did it change from immoral to moral? I don't moral think that is objective. I think it would still be objective if the principles are the same. The reason why you would the reason why the rapist had to marry the person that was raped, because he had to provide for that woman for the rest of his life. And I'm a man and I'm saying this, if I have to marry somebody I never wanted to marry and I couldn't divorce them, that's a fate worse than prison. I'm sorry. You have to be with somebody for the rest of your life, especially if that person's a nagger when I talk your ear up all the time. I don't want to be around that all the time. No, 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 no. You're talking about somebody that you raped. You realize so, that, right? I, I understand that, though. But he, the point is, is that they okay. have to provide for that woman. Okay? In okay. our society today, we, we have the same attitude that if a person is harmed, that we think that it is good to provide for that person that is harmed. Okay. The same principle. That's why I said it's a it's it's broad and it needs to be narrowed down a little bit for me to to give. It. I, I think I know what they're trying to say, but I have to think on that if they narrow it down a little bit. I, and, and I think I know who's asking it, but I could be wrong. So it's all good. So don't rape any naggy chicks, basically. <laughs> right. Uh, it was actually guys. No, 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 no. How about this? You don't rape nobody at all. I mean, can I ask you guys a question? Like that can you imagine that you have to marry somebody you didn't want to marry and you couldn't divorce them. I, mean, I want you to think about that a minute. I, I just wouldn't imagine being married to, to like, begin with. Do you imagine being married to Barbara Bush or somebody like that and you couldn't divorce them? Oh Lord, no, 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 no. You no. know Barbara Bush? She she's died, right? Yeah, yeah, she's she's cold, bro. He just died. Well, recently. you know what I mean, like 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 somebody that looks like you know the creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that, and you have to stay with them forever and ever and ever, and you couldn't and you couldn't divorce them. No, no, no. Uh, uh But that would imply you don't like somebody like, somebody like, like uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. What about that woman that looks like a cat that has a cat face? You know, what I mean, you were drunk at a party one day and you raped her, and 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 there was a law saying that you have to marry her and provide for her for the rest of your life. I think that's a man. Like, 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 think about that, man. You couldn't divorce. Oh, Lord. No, no, no. He looking like a I'm man. more afraid of that law than I am of going to jail for five years of having my name put in the database. That that The laws that we got today are pathetic. We, they, 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 they need to be more strict. They need a firing range for people who do that mess. Uh, again, I think the person that looks like a cat is actually a man. No, no, no. no. There's a woman that looks like a cat. I forget her name. But there's a woman out there that looks like her. I can get her name if you want. Oh. I find it I find it a bit a bit disturbing on a level that we 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 went through the the looks and the characteristics of somebody that could potentially be a rape victim. You know what I mean? Like I think that's a little out of out of taste, even for you, G Man. Yeah, that's what I kept do what? bringing up. To do what? 
I think it's last... the lady's name. I can screen share it if you want. But um, uh, the woman got plastic surgery to look like her cat. Cool. I don't know her name. Name. Let's go on to the next question while he looks for that. Uh, hey, let, me, let me screen share this for you guys here. Hold on. So y'all can see what I was talking about. Hold on. Let me screen share this. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Hold on. All right, y'all see this? Oh, no, hold on, not this. This right here? I don't think she's doing it as a cat. That's like, uh, that's actually surgery gone wrong. Is that fucking no, wrong? She, she wanted to look like her cat. The lady said she wanted to look like her cat. Look it up. I Googled it, and this is what came up. Her name is Jack uh, Jocelyn Wilderstein. The one who did that? She she got uh, plaque the surgery to look like her cat. So how do I stop screen sharing? Let me see. I wonder if she also walks around with her asshole exposed. <laughs> um, I'm just telling you that she uh, got plastic surgery. I wouldn't make fun of it if you don't know nothing about the topic. All right. If there was no God and everyone would act the same. If there was no God and everyone would act the same way they do now. Some more, some not. Wouldn't uh, then. Sorry, that question is kind of broken up. Uh. Wouldn't he then still believe that there was a God? Sorry. And that was too Sorry, say that again? If there was no God and everyone act the same way they same way they do now, some more uh some not wouldn't you then still believe there was a God? Yeah, nothing to do with morality. That's about whether or not God exists, I think, right? So uh No, but basically what they're saying is if if God um if everybody kept the same morals, like rape is not okay, killing is not okay, would you still be- and there was no God, would you still believe in a God? I think that's what she's trying to say. I don't believe in a God because of the way people act. I believe that a God exists because it's the best explanation. Well, initially, I believed in God because it's the best explanation for uh, for why everything is the way, why everything is here, in my opinion. Um, I believe in specifically uh, uh, Jesus Christ for other reasons. It has nothing to do with any of that. So I can't really answer that question. I think this is a serious question, and so I'm going to ask it as a serious question. So if if moral is what God wants, and God wants G-Man dead, then G-Man is immoral by being alive. Say that again? Uh, so if moral is what God wants, and God wants G-Man dead, then G-Man is immoral by being alive. I don't know if that was more of a no, question or um, more of a yeah, That doesn't statement. sound very well thought out. I, I don't know what to say about that. Okay, I think there's some more questions. That sounds like a, I don't think that's a serious question. Uh, let's see. That doesn't even make no sense. I'm really here thinking about that. That's more like a comment. That's not a question. Well, it was in my question, short live show questions on Discord. So, um, yeah, this is actually for you, Kyle. Does Kyle think statutory is always rape? Is it always immoral? Do I think what, statutory is rape? Say that again. Uh, I mean, I, that's. That's a good question. I I think that when you're talking about somebody that's like 17 um, and chooses to have, you know, sex with somebody that's a little older, I wouldn't call that statutory rape. Now, if you get down to the, um, you know, 15s, 14s, then yeah, I would consider that statutory rape. I'd have to agree with that. But I mean, that's not a, that's a, more of a legal thing than it is anything. It, it's it's a good question, but it depends on the, the age. I think 17 is a lot different than 14. Um, I think that's the objective, and I'm in agreement with you because, well, yeah, that's a tricky question. That's not an easy one either. I think that, I think that's subjective because I actually disagree with the age of. Well, yeah, you know, and I don't even want to talk about that right now. But I, I would probably agree with you guys on that. I, I, I don't think that statutory rape is. A, I mean, if 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 somebody is at the age where they can actually do those things, then they should be allowed to do those things under the right. Uh, uh, under the right, like you know, being married and all that stuff and whatnot. Um, I know people ain't gonna wait till they get married, but uh, that, that that law says that if you're under the age of uh, uh 18, well, under the age of 16 or something like that, you can't have sex, right? So, I think do, some some states it is 18, but um, like, I is that the same as rape, rape? No, 
because if if you're talking about somebody like a, a a girl that's consenting, you know what I mean? Like if it's a 17 year old that is, um, you know, consenting to have sex with somebody in some states, is that considered statutory rape? Yeah. But would I consider it that? No. Is that on any way in any way, shape or form on the level of rape rape? No. That's a tricky one because that's subjective. I'm sorry. That would be that would be. Yeah. Subjective. Yeah. Did you know, though, that there there are some in almost every state, it's still legal to uh, marry a 12 year old for religious reasons. That's the thing. Like you can Vice News did a, a piece on that. You can legally marry a 12 year old in, in many of the states in this country. So do I think that's moral? No. Is that legal? Yes. So, I mean. Well, 12 years old, I think that's a little young. So that, yeah, that, that, absolutely. That's an issue of opinion. That's an issue of opinion. That's not something that... Uh, I, 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 I find that <laughs> to be moral. But I'm just saying... Uh, a 12-year-old? Uh, I don't think a 12-year-old has any business getting married. Nobody. A 12-year-old right. should be getting an education. Agreed. That's what I'm saying, though. It's still a legal thing here. So, I mean, you have those, you have those cases where it's... It's immoral but legal, and legal but immoral. You know, it swings both ways. See, in, in, in Christianity, if that twelve-year-old got married in that particular state, I don't think there'd be anything wrong with it. But I'm pretty sure just about everybody in the church, except for some of the old heads, maybe because maybe they're the ones that would do something like that. All right, real uh, quick, I think this is a. I don't know about that. I couldn't support that. I don't know. <laughs> All right, here's a question. Um, I think this is one that Jay's been trying to throw on. I'm not exactly sure. I'm trying to catch it, and I haven't seen it yet. Um, does G-Man think Kyle should be stoned? Does Kyle think Kyle should be stoned? Um, I'm going to say Kyle said, Kyle does not think he needs to be stoned. No. <laughs> I'm going to throw yeah, that out. I think yeah. he should be stoned today? Yes. Today? No. Is no, it, I don't believe that today no is it moral i don't think no homosexual today should be stoned today no i i disagree with that line of thinking that says that um homosexuals should be stoned today no i absolutely disagree with that no i i i i do not support the stoning of gays in the united states of america different country different culture uh, nah 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 this ain't a theocracy this is a this is supposed to be a democracy but Oops. Uh, does G-Man think South African Arpithid was a genocide? Not all people were killed after all. Uh, same with the Holocaust apartheid. and... Huh? You're talking about apartheid? Yeah, no, I fucked that up, my bad. Um, but uh, does G-Man think Holocaust was a genocide? Not all J Jews were killed. I don't think that it was that it was genocide, but they certainly was attempting it. That's for sure. It was attempting it. I'm trying to get them in as uh, as fast as I can, guys. Um, I think I kind of already asked that one. So I think I'm I think I'm just a, a little lost at your definition of genocide, though. And I think that's kind of what the the question was getting at. In order to commit genocide, everybody everybody in that particular tribe or that particular group has to die. Everybody, not not, not some of them. Everybody has to die. So, wh wh where where would you get that definition from? I believe that's the technical definition. I'll look it up right now. Hold on. Well, um, I'm getting the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of yeah. That's in Google. Um, or nation. Oh, okay. So it would be similar to mass murder, a homicide, or a massacre. See. Okay, let's say hypothetically speaking, in the Bible that Saul did actually, um, I wish I would have saw this earlier. Let's say um, that hypothetically speaking, that Saul did succeed, killed all of the people that was in the land. That still wouldn't be considered genocide. And the only reason I'm saying that is going to be kind of weird coming from me. Uh, because the synonym for the word genocide is mass murder, mass homicide, and a massacre. And all of those things involve an illegal activity. But the lawgiver was the one telling them to do it. So it wasn't illegal. So what well, law was being broken? 
not to mention, if Veco was in here, if Veco would say that God is sovereign, he can do whatever he wants with his creation. But I wouldn't put it that way. I would actually put qualifiers on it. Because, God is um, a sovereign citizen? No, 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 no. The God is sovereign. He can do what he wants with his with, with his creation. But I would, but I would say more than just that because if you stop, if you stop and just say that, then it it it, it, it comes across as being a bit cold. Is God does, being detained? Tends to say more. <laughs> All right, I finally got Jake's question. So, um, there is evidence that we are born with moral instincts. This comes from research done at the baby lab. I wonder if either Kyle or G men are aware of this and how this affects their worldview. So, I've heard. Of so, that, yes. yeah. So, morality may be inborn to some extent. What is, exactly is a, does a baby do that would be considered to be moral? It's an evolutionary. It's an evolutionary um, process. It's how we've evo- we've lasted, evolved like we have, like our sense of, you know, taking care of of people that uh, we don't know. You know, uh, to be able to feel empathy, to um, do charity work. That's what's continued the human race. If we were a bunch of um, animals running around killing everything that, you know, got in our path or made us angry, we wouldn't be a human race right now. We would be extinct. But instead, we have things like empathy and um, kindness and um, looking to help people, even if we don't know them. Even if there's nothing in it for us at all, we still... Um, choose to help people, and that's what's continued our existence. I gotta disagree with that. I think that those things are taught to us, and we have the capacity to have those things, but I don't know about getting that from ever. I mean, even if I would agree with that, because I do believe in variations within the kinds, uh, because that's a real thing, uh, nah, I think we're taught those things. So, well, we are taught, we are taught those things by you know, our our parents, but I think that it's something that even if you weren't taught that, like if, even if you had a horrible upbringing and, you know, your parents weren't around, if you saw somebody that was on the street, it was freezing and you had a coat on and could get to your house later. I think most people would give that person a coat and that's innate in us because we have empathy and that's what's led to us still being here is because we take, think of the countries when, when there's a country that's, you know, does something against its people we don't just stand by and say well that's too bad for them over there no we go over there and we help those people we intervene on their behalf to keep them from getting genocide same thing with the holocaust you know you go in and you stop that from continuing on that's what leads to the continuation of the human race is that empathy to push forward and help people and the the chat that you brought up something uh pretty pretty good about about you saying that we are taught if they had to be taught, then it is not written in our hearts. Well, that's Good option point. B that I would say that 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 God writes His laws on our hearts. But you gotta remember when 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 you're a baby, you don't know anything. So you have to grow up and you have to mature and everything before you can even know any of these concepts and whatnot. You know what I mean? So when we become adults, then you can recognize those things. But when you're a baby, the only thing you know is wah, 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 I'm hungry. I wet myself. That's all you know when you're born. What you about know? people like in in India or in the Middle East who believe in, you know, don't believe in the, the, the Christian God? Not so to mention, those, complete... laws written, those laws can be written on your heart when you're older and not necessarily when you're born. I never said that those laws were written on your heart when you were born. Not the same thing. But what about the people who were, who were born in another country, never around the Christian God, never, you know, they only know their God, whether it be Buddha, um, the Hindu God, Allah. What about those people who still do more acts of empathy, who still do moral acts? I mean, I never said that those people didn't have a moral basis for what they were doing. We're right, arguing where, we're talking but, about whether or not somebody has a, a basis for the morality. A Buddhist is going to base their religion on, on is going to base their morality on their religion. A, uh, anybody that's got a religious practice or whatever is going to base it on their particular religion. An atheist bases it on their own subjective opinions. Uh, uh, at least it's it's not. Not. there's some knuckleheads out there that claim that they don't got no basis at all. And then you have Christians that base their um that 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 they base their moral values on scripture on what God says. Right. So everybody has so a, the Buddha. For the most part should have a basis, except for the people sure. out there that don't think before they speak and claim that they don't. So the Buddhist and the Hindu who base theirs on a completely different God, their morality, when they do the same acts as the Christian, 
Um, their authority is on the same level as the authority of the Christian God. Like, how do you how do you gauge where they're getting their morals from? If they're basing it in their religion, then you're saying that you know, like the Hindu God would be on the same level as the Christian God. They would still have a basis for their morality. I'm not going to call them but, immoral until we, until we start talking about the acts. Right. There, okay. So right, there are levels. There are levels of people's morality. You. 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 you you have your own personal opinion. You have you have this. Mm -hmm. you, you have the lawgiver, and then you have God. Mm -hmm. Because what God says goes at the end of the day, whether people like it or not. And Even the same with him. And some other people got to agree with me on that one. And the same with God. Sorry, God. God doesn't have subjective morality. God, God. God's morality is morality. That's not what I'm asking. <laughs> it is right and wrong. <laughs> The Hindus get their morality from from let's say they say they get their morality from their God. They get it from is a their God on the same, and they get that is their God, God on the same level as and the they get theirs from, No, absolutely not, because there's only one one in true and living God, and that's the God of the Bible. With, with Krishna, they would say the same thing. Krishna, well, no, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. They wish Christianity they, is the only they, one that makes that claim. The other religions out there. The Abrahamic religions, I'm sorry, are the only ones that make that claim. These other religions are a little bit more chatterable with that. But their morality is true, though, right? Because they're doing the same things that the moral Christian would do. So how do you – where are they getting theirs from? Sorry, say that again? Where are they getting their morals from? If it's not coming from the Christian God, where is it coming from? You, you claim that, that from morality – from an absolute – that they're getting it from an absolute source. They're appealing to something. So their God is real. I mean, I'm a little confused. Are we arguing about whether or not these people are moral or are we arguing whether or not they have subjective, I'm sorry, do they have objective moral values? You said that mor that all morality comes from God, right? That he writes it on people's hearts. So who wrote under, it on their hearts? Under a different situation. This is getting confusing because I don't know if you're arguing for, um, for, uh, uh, for these people being moral with what they do or whether or not people have absolute moral standards. We already established the fact that you believe that rape is wrong all the time and that absolute moral right. standards actually do exist. It's not subjective. That's objective we, at that point when you can't find something that, 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 that if you can't find something within that rape issue where it's okay to do it, then it becomes an absolute. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And since you already admitted right. yeah. that all rape situations are actually, um, are actually wrong, then absolute moral values actually exist. Because you have them. for me. No, for me. Yeah, but the, it doesn't matter if it's just for you. The, okay, but the 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 Hindu God, right? You let me ask you this. Ultimately, do you feel that mor it, that morality, if it's a tangible, objective thing, right? Morality is objective. Who decides what that objective morality is? Say that again. Who decides the the objective morality that you believe exists? Who decides what that is? Like what is objectively moral and what isn't? The individual person. It's not up to God. No, it's an individual person when you're talking about subjective morality. I'm not arguing that subjective Object morality doesn't exist. Wait, objective. No. I'm not arguing that subjective morality doesn't exist. I I'm saying subjective. I believe in absolute moral values, just like a lot of right. other people do too. And you're saying that they don't exist. I'm saying that they do exist. Who, who decides what an absolute uh, morality is an absolute who decides moral that? lawgiver, an absolute moral lawgiver, and then the who is that absolute, absolute God? Who is that absolute moral lawgiver? It would be God, and I can actually argue, believe it or not, I can actually argue it would be the atheist because if the atheist doesn't appeal to someone else's, um, now listen to me, listen to me very carefully. If the atheist does not appeal to something other than himself, mm -hmm. okay, then he makes himself out to be a god. Okay, so okay, we can get there, but the the Hindu person. Let's go back to the Hindu person, right? If you say that absolute morality comes from God, what about the morality that they believe? The Hindus, whatever their right. holy text is. So it the, would not, the it, it, it would not it would not suggest that there are no absolute moral values. You keep trying to like bring up other religions, but they're always appealing right. to something. You understand what I'm right. saying? So which one's right? God. I'm ultimately asking, which one's right? right? Which one's right? right? You ask me. We're talking about which one? Right? We're talking about absolutes. Right. We're talking about whether or not which one? Which one? All okay, the absolutes. Which right. one's correct? Which one is the ultimate authority? The Hindu God or your oh, God? God? 
God. It depends okay, how do you, on, how you that? on the individual. Depends on the individual. Okay. And what you believe. So the Muslim is going to be okay. Allah. The Christian is going to be um, is going to okay. be the God of the Bible. Point of the matter is, they're appealing to an absolute moral lawgiver, and they're going to tell you that something is right all the time and something is wrong all the time. The person's not talking that way about something being right or wrong all the time, then they don't have absolute moral values. I know that you have them because you believe that rape is wrong all the time. As a matter of fact, the geek room has them too because they believe that genocide is wrong all the time. Jade has absolute moral values because Jade believes that genocide is wrong all the time. Are we sure we agree on the definition of genocide, though? No, we 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 do agree on it. I got the definition right here, right? And we agree that the de, that is the the deliberate killing, okay, of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or a nation. The synonyms for this word is mass murder, mass homicide, so a massacre. So that word killing there has to be the unlawful killing of um entire um civilizations. God would not be guilty of that because God is not breaking any particular laws. I do want to point what out real quick that Caitlin is correct. Uh, Allah and Yahweh are the same God. If you say so, I don't know. I don't believe that. But As Allah fact, I means that. that's they, just stupid. That's ridiculous. Kind of only thing they differed besides what they wrote is their Messiah. Uh, Islam is Muhammad. Christianity is Jesus. But Allah and God is the same person. Allah and God ain't the same person. I can prove that right now. I don't think we got enough time. <laughs> is it possible for you to have a kid and not have a kid at the same time? What? Is it possible for you to have a son and not have a son at the same time? It's possible for two books to have con conflicting viewpoints at the same time. Right, you're right, you're right. You're right about that. But here's the thing. The God of the Bible has a son. A lot don't. But <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better. Okay, check this out. A lot forces you to become a Muslim which is directly uh, contradictory to what Christianity is, in which we give you the choice. They're not the same person. I don't know. I was got to break the law. Not trying, trying to be I'm forced into Christianity. So. Sometimes the fan fiction's not always so good. <laughs> yeah, but is this the end of this? Because I really got to give me some food. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're about to end this. Um, yeah. I, gotta... I didn't quit. Are you wrong about that? I'm not declaring victory. You're wrong about that. I, I think you are president, Kyle, because you because you didn't know about certain things in the Old Testament. So he's just, he's just going to sit here and off. tell you how you were wrong about everything, but he's not declaring I, victory. I, I don't think that, <laughs> no. I, I don't think that there's any. Let me just point out that I don't think that there's anything that um, you can say you got me on. Um, you said that in the I Old Testament that, you, that there were no laws against rape. There, no, I said that there was no laws condemning it. There, there's no where it, it, now it's condemning. Now you have the word condemning to it. Okay, all right. I, want that I, 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 I will not, I will not, I will not. Hey man, please, more about listen, this man, please go back and listen to where I said the Bible. I, nowhere you know does it do say that, anything I'm, right. video, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you, listen, listen, if you find that you, if you find that I don't say condemning, you can feel free to make a video. I hope you do. I don't want to make, make a video. video. I, I'm, I'm thinking about taking a YouTube break soon. I, I don't think I'm doing that now. I, I think you should, but I said, I said, I said nowhere in the Bible does it condemn rape and it doesn't. It does condemn rape. And you heard the text when no, I gave it to Deuteronomy 22. Another it, says, it says that you, if you rape a betrothed woman. It does not say that if you rape a virgin. Read it in context. What about the virgins? Situation. What about the virgins? Situations. If there's a fornication, right, that's not there's fornication, and then there's rape. That's going on hey, there. I think we're going to have to disagree on this, my friend. I think we're going to have no, to agree to disagree. No, no. On. I think you need to go read Deuteronomy 22, my friend. You need to go read some scripture. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I will certainly will. I got to show you the video with the Hebrew Israelites when I changed their mind on this topic, when I actually made them actually read the text that they were trying to use to justify rape in the Bible. If they was actually saying, oh, see, we can rape people. We can rape people. And then I told them to keep reading, and they went. Do you see how that's confusing, G-Man? How or Does it bother you that certain people can read the same verse in a group, take it out of context and say that it's okay to rape people. And then you have some people who say, well, this means something completely different. I mean, if you were God and you were going to leave your inspired word behind, wouldn't you be specific about not raping anyone? 
Well, here's the thing, though, okay? It, the Bible is specific about it. People don't like to read. That's what it is. It tells you in black and white that you shouldn't do it. And 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 and, and, and the bottom line is, is that people pretend like these words are not there. But you know what I'll do to kill confusion? I'll do it yet another Bible study on the same topic that already exists on my channel. And I'll prove that that, that he does condemn it. Because it's already on my channel. It's like slavery is already okay. on there. I explain the differences between the translated slave trade. Beckel did this. I did this. Uh, 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 I forget the other two brothers, uh, a warrior, warrior of God or whatever. And it was another guy, GM.nice. We all got together and did a series of videos proving that the translated slave trade and the slavery that you see in the Bible are not the same things. And we didn't contradict each other one time. All right. Well, it is going on being laid better than the Bible. <laughs> so I, I, unfortunately, there was a lot of good questions. I can't get to them all because if, if not, if, if I got to them all, we'd be here all night. Um, and I think G Man is looking to kind of get off to at some point. So, um, guys, I thank you for coming in. Thanks to uh, all the donations that were made. Um, again, all this is going through the 24 hour show to make this make this better. Um, no post show tonight because I got to make some couple calls about something. So, um, guys, I think I I I I, I don't want to. I hate to, I hate to say this in front of G Man, but uh, Drag did say he was opening a post show in the chat. Okay, so. <laughs> so if anyone wants to go check that out that's going on yeah so um thanks for viewing in and we will see you guys later